We live in a society where we feel the pressure to be socially accepted and beauty standards for women are constantly changing and what it has meant for a woman to be beautiful and desired has constantly evolved throughout the decades. For example, for eras like ancient Greece and the Italian Renaissance, the standard was being plump, full-bodied, ample bosom, rounded stomach, full hips. The bigger you were, the better. But in the 20s, having a flat chest and a boyish figure were more popular. And then fast forwarding to the 40s and 50s, it was all about having the hourglass shape and the stitched waist. And then in the 60s, it was all about being long and thin. And then in the 90s supermodel era, it was all about being tall, athletic, but still curvy. So what does it take to be conventionally beautiful in today's world? And what does it mean to have pretty privilege? So in today's video, I am going to discuss the different types of women that have pretty privilege, what to do if you don't have it, and what to do with it if you do have it. Let's get into it. So every woman wants to feel beautiful, right? And with the history of this country and how beauty has been portrayed throughout the media throughout the years, it's no surprise that we are living in the era of filters, body enhancements, plastic surgery. One of the biggest beauty trends right now is having the big bust and the big bottom and the small waist. So why are some women resulting to this? Well, some may argue or can argue that it has something to do with having pretty privilege. So first of all, what is pretty privilege? Well, pretty privilege, also referred to as beauty bias or beauty privilege, is the theory that people who are considered the most attractive based on societal beauty standards are given more opportunities, unearned advantages, and better treatment compared to average looking people. So now that we know what pretty privilege is, what is physical attraction? What about someone's face when you look at it makes you feel physically attracted to them? What in your brain says, hmm, this person is pleasing for me to look at? So physical attractiveness is the degree to which a person's physical features are considered aesthetically pleasing or beautiful. There are many factors which influence one person's attraction to another, with the physical aspects being one of them. Physical attraction itself includes universal perceptions common to all human cultures, such as facial symmetry, socio-culture dependent attributes, and personal preferences unique to a particular individual. So this can lead to what is known as the halo effect. And if you've never heard of the halo effect, just to put it to you in short form, for example, if you have a photograph of a person that looks attractive, they're dressed properly, they have on good attire, you tend to have positive assumptions or feelings towards that person. You tend to believe that they are a good person even though you've never met them versus if you have a photograph of a person that is not deemed attractive or is not dressed well, you tend to think the opposite. You tend to have negative feelings towards this person and have negative stereotypes against this person. You will probably see this a lot in the workplace. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So as far as the two new candidates are concerned. We're thinking Patricia Wright. I mean, she has a degree from Harvard, a business degree at that, um, a master. She also has met all of the requirements for the position. She's literally perfect. Oh, well, I was actually thinking Caroline. Why? I mean, she may be a little bit of a wild card, but I think that she would be refreshing for the company. There's literally nothing on her resume that says she's fit for the job. Oh, and did you see her shoes and her bag? Oh my gosh. I gag for Valentino. Yeah, her 
outfit was stunning, but as far as the job, how did she even get this interview? There's literally nothing on her resume that states that she even has a background in accounting. How do you think? I mean, yeah, we're hiring a candidate for our company, but we're also hiring one of the faces of our company. Oh. And Caroline just fits in better, so just gonna go with something different this time. Now, before we get into the different types of women that have pretty privilege, this is usually measured by their skin tone, their body type, genotype, phenotype, texturism, and usually women that resemble Eurocentric standard of beauty. So what are the different types of women that have pretty privilege? Well, number one, the prototypical. I call this one the prototypical type because she is your quintessential beauty. This type checks off most of the boxes of what makes or deems someone as beautiful. This woman is beautiful naturally. She has beautiful hair, smile, body, face, etc. She is deemed conventionally beautiful by society's standards. She has passed the test. Whether it be through family, friends, or social media, she has received enough validation to validate herself as beautiful. She has met a specific threshold. She believes and she believes others believe that she is beautiful. She knows her beauty and what it has done for her and what it can do for her. Her beauty is her brand. It has either made her money or can make her money. She is very aware that people are fond of her looks and has received advantages and nice things because of it. Now, not to say that these women's lives are perfect because we never know what someone is dealing with internally, but on the surface, these women are deemed gorgeous and they have no problem flaunting it or celebrating it. Now, it doesn't mean that this type is necessarily vain, but for some of these women, beauty is their brand and their lifestyle. Number two, I call this type the show pony. I call this type the show pony because they have not been deemed conventionally attractive overall, but there is a distinctive feature that they have that garners them a lot of attention or pretty privilege. Now, this feature could be that they have a really long, beautiful, luxurious hair. They may have a really nice smile, a nice body. Maybe they are known for their even glowing skin. There's just something about them that is unique and they have this one particular feature that really works for them. Now, it may not work for everybody else, but for them, it works great. And people are drawn to them because of it. They may be an athlete or super athletic. They may be really witty or really smart, or they may have a high profile job or a certain career. Whatever this feature is, it makes them very attractive and people are fascinated by it. And because of this, they get advantages. Number three, the poser. Now this type is very interesting to me and this type has not initially been deemed conventionally attractive by society, but they want to be. They want the pretty privilege and they will go out and get it. They will go out and make the necessary changes to themselves to have what they consider is pretty privilege. Meaning that they will make what they feel are the necessary changes to themselves, not just so society can feel better about them, but most importantly, they can feel better about themselves. Now, like I stated right now, we do live in a society of plastic surgery and body enhancements, and I can't judge anyone for what they decide to do to their body. We never know what someone is going through or how someone is feeling inside. And I do believe what works for one person may not work for the next person. I think that the misconception with this type is that they are doing this solely for the attention of others or to fit in, when a lot of times they are really doing it for themselves. And as a woman, like I stated, we all want to feel pretty. We all want to feel beautiful. We're all searching for that I feel good about myself feeling. 
There are insecurities that we have that no one knows about and they don't know to what extent that insecurity may bother us. So we may be out somewhere and someone may be joking and not meaning any harm and they may say something that hurts your feelings that knocks on that particular insecurity. And instead of dealing with it in the moment, sometimes we'll take that shard of glass or that piece of pain and we will carry that with us wherever we go. And if left unchecked or not checked properly, it starts to affect how we move and how we feel about ourselves. So this particular type desires to be desired. And a lot of times with this particular type, they may have a close friend that they hang out with a lot and they begin to notice how this friend is treated. And this friend may be deemed beautiful by society and they may get advantages that this particular type wants for themselves. So sometimes they may start mimicking that friend, how they act, how they talk, how they dress, or they may change their body or change something about themselves that resembles how that friend looks. And a lot of times this particular type tends to overcompensate. For example, they may feel the need to be the best dressed in the room or the smartest in the room to overcompensate for what they feel they lack in the beauty department. Number four, the hidden treasure. Now, this type is pretty, but everyone knows it except her. This type doesn't have to wear nice clothing or makeup. She is just pleasant to look at and to be around. She can have on glasses, a big hoodie or a sweatshirt, and her hair up in a messy bun, and her beauty will still shine through. A lot of what makes this type beautiful is that she's unaware of it, and she doesn't put her value in beauty as much as others would or think she should. She may be more of an intellectual or a creative, and she may not even be into the beauty and fashion world at all. Her beauty almost surprises you because at first you don't notice it. It's like a pleasant and refreshing surprise. And because this type doesn't come off as vain, people will want to be around her and give her things because she is pretty and also because she is kind and warm. In movies, this would be your plain Jane type that gets a makeover. Now this type is very unique because she is considered beautiful without all of the bells and whistles. And she doesn't need makeup or need to be glamorous. Her beauty is already present and visible. But however, when she does decide to put on some makeup in a nice dress, she will turn heads like no other. And last but not least, number five, the exuberant. Now this one may be my favorite. Now this type can be deemed conventionally beautiful or not. It doesn't matter because her personality is so magnetic. People just want to be around her. This type lights up a room and brings excitement. She is funny and fun to be around. Everyone has a good time with this type. She is interesting and cool and has a definite vibe. People want to give her things because they want to endorse her because it makes them look good. They want her at their event or party because they know that she will liven it up and that people will solely come just because she is there. You want to give her things because you want to be associated with her. This type makes you look good and feel good. This type has a charismatic feature that you cannot buy. This is the type that I think I've witnessed the most and I'm most drawn to. This is the type that out of the group of friends, everyone waits on and makes sure that she's coming. This is the type that can get you into free parties, that knows everyone, has all the contacts, can work a room. This type of pretty privilege has longevity because although they can be beautiful, they don't rely on their beauty and their personality can definitely outlast their looks. So what should you do if you don't have pretty privilege and you want it? Well, you can make the choice not to allow someone to put you in a box of what beauty standards should be. 
You don't have to subscribe to anyone's concept of what it means to be beautiful. And I know that that's hard because even when we were children, we were given Barbie dolls, which were like some kind of replica of what a perfect human should be. But we all know that in real life, we were all different in size, color, shape, etc. And a lot of times you may run into people who benefit or have benefited from pretty privilege who can't understand the angle of someone who hasn't. I also say focus on yourself and how you can be your best self. How can you elevate or upgrade yourself? For example, like working on your personal goals, going to the gym and eating healthier to live a healthier lifestyle. Just any kind of self-care that you can do for yourself, even if it's something small. Even getting a therapist and working on your mental health. For me right now, I want to improve my skin, so I've been drinking eight to 10 glasses of water a day. Anything that you can do to improve your overall mental, physical, and emotional health will usually always lead to confidence. So if you do have pretty privilege, what should you do with it? Well, I say capitalize off of it and use it strategically and use it as a tool. Now there's nothing wrong with having pretty privilege or someone thinking that you're beautiful because we all have different things that we are privy to that others may not be privy to and vice versa. It's how society is constructed. Beauty is promoted in a favorable way. So if you do have it, use it to elevate yourself and others. For example, because of your pretty privilege, Say someone bought you a home and helped you obtain property and land, which in return allowed you to become financially successful. And in the midst of that person buying you a home, you learned about real estate. Take that knowledge and grow a business and help others obtain a home and property as well. If someone has financially blessed you because of your pretty privilege, take that money and invest in yourself. Learn a new skill. Dedicate some of your free time to helping someone who may not have free time and needs some help. If you have been blessed with a trip or a vacation, take a friend with you that hasn't traveled or a friend in need of a vacation. I guess my point is if you do have it, don't put all of your eggs into one basket. Nothing is constant but time. Things are always changing. And I know I didn't discuss this in this particular video, but there are disadvantages of people that do have pretty privilege. And one of those is that sometimes people can put you on a pedestal because of your beauty. And the problem with that is, is that if you are not able to maintain that level of beauty, people will knock you off your pedestal and take away your pretty privilege. So in conclusion, what do you think about today's beauty standards and what do you think about pretty privilege? Please share your thoughts in the comment section and do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'd love to have you as a part of my community and to build a space where people are passionate about the things that I am also passionate about. So thank you for watching and until next time.